Hi guys, uh, welcome to another Chama Valley Maths tutorial. Mr. Gordon here. I'm looking at the core maths paper. It's um, paper 2A, it's the practice paper. And I'm going to be looking at question 4. So that's to do with linear regression and scatter graphs. Um, so it says we've got a guy, Jack, who works as an analyst for Doppel, a smartphone company. And he has chosen 10 people from the company. And he's recorded their age and he's also recorded how many words they can type into a text message in one minute. And the table has all the data for us. So you've got the names of the people, the genders, the ages, and the number of words they can type in a minute. And part A is just asking us to plot this onto a scatter diagram. So this is sort of GCSE content here. You need to decide a scale, really. Have a look at the ages and decide an appropriate scale for the x-axis and then look at the range of words typed and decide an appropriate scale to go on your y-axis. Okay, so pause the video, have a go at plotting that, and when you come back, I'll show you um, the next step. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at that, and I'll show you what I did. So my graph looks like this. I use this scale for the age, so every square represented two years, and for the number of words, I've just done one square for one word. Um, the range of the words was uh, a lot smaller than the range of the ages, so that's why I chose that scale. Hopefully your diagram looks something like this, and um, then we can move on to the next part. So what do we need to do for part uh, B? Well, this is the actual linear regression part, and that means um, we've got to work out the equation of sort of the line of best fit. Now at GCSE, it was really easy for us because all we would do is grab a, a ruler and draw a straight line roughly through those points um, and that would get us the marks but the next level up to this is we've actually got to work out what is the most efficient sort of line of best fit and the way we do that is we can use the calculator to help us work out the gradient and the y-intercept or also the equation as well of that regression line so let's have a look at doing that um, if I just quickly remind you from GCSE, this was the kind of stuff that we would do, and the equation of a straight line from GCSE was y equals mx plus c. Now hopefully you can remember that, and the m stood for the gradient, how steep the line was. And the c part, the, the number that was on its own, was just the y-intercept. So the number in front of the x was the gradient, and the number um, on its own was, was the y-intercept. So you can see from my example, that the gradient is 2. Now what does that mean? If you've got a gradient of 2, what does that mean about the steepness of your line? Well, what it's telling us is, if we go across one unit in the x direction, how much does my line change in terms of the y? So you can see on this one, it actually goes up by 2. So that's why we've got a positive 2 in front of the x. The number, we've got 3 there. That just tells you where it crosses the y-axis. So you can see the line crosses at 3. The y-intercept equals 3. I hope that's kind of given you a bit of a, a reminder of what we covered at GCSE. Now, at this point, um, in the level three qualification, we've actually got to work out the equation of that regression line. So we need to work out the value of the gradient, and we need to work out the, uh, the y-intercept, and we can put those values in to that y equals mx plus c formula. So grab your calculator. And the, the, the data we're going to need is here from part A. I'm going to do this on the Casio, but I will do an, uh, an equivalent video on the Sharp, because I know some students have said, can you do that? So I'll do that as well. Please check the website. Step one on the Casio, press mode. So press your mode button. That's, that's, that's here. And then you're looking for the stats option. So whatever options that come up on your screen, hopefully you've got something similar to this. Just press two for stats. Then you'll be um, presented with these options on the screen below. And you want the um, the option that says A plus BX. Now I just said, didn't I, that it was Y equals MX plus C. And now they've changed it to A plus BX. So the M was in front of the X. Now we've got a B. So the B is now the gradient on the calculator. And the A is the C part. The A is the Y-intercept. So bear that in mind when, when we come to the later stages. If you press that option, you get a, a table which looks very much like the table we've got. So you can see that the information is just going to go straight into here. On the x-axis, we had the ages. 
So we can just type the ages into the X column. You just do that by typing in 39, press equals, and it enters that, that value into that slot. And then start on the Y values as well. So fill those in, same, same process, scroll across to the Y column, type in the value, press equals, and it'll enter the data. Pause the video, enter that data into your calculator, and then I'll show you how to carry on. Okay, once you've entered all that data, press the AC button. Don't worry, it won't clear your data, but just press the AC button. Then you need to, let me skip forward, you need to press Shift, then 1. Because if you look above your number 1, there's a little stat uh, label there. So that will bring you to this screen here. And you want regression. So we're doing linear regression. So whatever option regression is, on my calculator, it's 7. So press 7. And then I get um, some options here, and you can see my A and my B are right there. So if you want the A value, which we said was the Y-intercept, then you press um, 1, and I've written my value down here. I got 26.58. You should be getting the same value for A. Then press 2, or sorry, press Shift 1 again, go back in, then press 2 to get the B value, which is the gradient, and that is minus 0.35. Um, I've written down the uh, the equations again to remind you because it's a little bit confusing we're swapping the the variables you know we're swapping the m for a b and the c's turned into an a and they've also put them uh, you know put the the a first instead of having it at the end so uh, what you need to do is write down the equation but you need to substitute in the values that we found so you're going to write y equals and then for a put 26.58, so you can see I put it there, and then B was minus 0 0.35, and then times X, okay? So that bottom equation is, is what you should be writing out. And then I would actually advise you to change the X and the Y at this point, because they didn't have X on the X axis, they said that age was gonna be represented by the letter A, so I've changed an X to A, and that represents the person's age, and the Y value, I've changed it to um, W, because that represents the number of words that that person could type. Okay, so the equation basically says, if you want to know the number of words a person can type, you type into your calculator 26.58 minus 0.35 times their age, times A. So um, we have a, an equation here where we can work out um, the number of words a person can type from their age. And how do we turn that into a regression line? How do we plot this on our axis? So basically, we need to remind ourselves that the y-intercept, where it crosses, where the regression line crosses the y-axis, is given by the a value, 26.58. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that on. My regression line should cross at 26.58. Now, I'm going to do this quite roughly here, because 25 is there, and... 26 is the one above, so it's going to be just up here, 26.5, about there, I think, okay? And I need another point, really, so then I can join them up to make the regression line. I'm going to grab the calculator, and I'm just going to clear that off. You can see I've been doing some work there already. I'm going to type in, using the equation that we made, I'm going to type in to see how many words a person who's 60 year years old could type in a minute. So I'm going to type in, right, 26.58 minus 0, oh, hold on a second, 0 0.35 times that age. Now I said I wanted to do a 60 year old, so where the A was, I'm putting 60. And if I ever substitute into a formula on a calculator, I always use brackets wherever I'm substituting in. Okay, I recommend that you do that all the time. Press equals and it will tell me the number of words a 60 year old can type. So let's have a look. So my regression line is sort of predicting from the data that a 60 year old could type 5.58 words in a minute into a text message. Now if you have any elderly relatives, think about how long that's going to take them to type a message to you. Okay, is that, do you think that's true in real life? I'll leave that to you to decide. So anyway, let's plot that on. 60 years old, 5.58, so there's 5, and we just mark it in. It's about there, okay? So that's our regression line. Let's join those two points up, and we can 
get a nice regression line. So there we are, I'm going to extend it all the way across. So my regression line will look like that, okay? And what I'm going to do is have a look at the next part, part uh, BII. Now I've copied over the, the diagram here, and it says, interpret the gradient of your regression line in the context of Jack's data. So, I mean, what does that mean? It's basically saying to us, sort of draw a conclusion from the graph. What can we sort of say from the graph? Now, the gradient I told you before is if you go along a certain number in the x direction, how does your y value change? So remember, our x um, axis is the ages. So as you get older by a certain amount, how does that affect your ability to type a text message? So obviously we see we've got a negative gradient. So as you get older, you can type less and less and less. Um, and let's try and make a, a, a comparison between two ages and then we can write a conclusion. So I've chosen um, to look at how many words can a 20 year old type and how many words can a 30 year old type. Now, how did I get these values? Well, there's two ways you could do this really. You could read off your graph. So grab um, your ruler and just draw a line from 20 just like GCSE up to your regression line and then read off so you can see it's it's sort of just under 20 19.5 I rounded it up to and then do the same for another age group so I said 30 didn't I so let's do it at 30 so up we go to the regression line and then across from there and that comes out at almost 16 I've rounded it to 16 Okay, so you could use your diagram to help you. Alternatively, we could use the formula on the calculator. Look, it's still sat there, ready to go. And all I've got to do is scroll back in and replace. Now, let me try and show you how I did that. Scroll back in, delete 60, because we're not talking about 60-year-olds anymore. The 20-year-old, put their age in as 20. Let the equation do the work. How many words can a 20-year-old uh, type in a minute? Predicted by the line. Well, it comes out at... 19.58 so I could have done it on the calculator instead of using the graph and then wrote that down gone back in and typed in 30 so change that age again to 30 how many words can a 30 year old type well let's find out the calculator says 16.08 so again round that to 16 and make a note of that so we've got some values there and all we really need to do now is sort of draw a conclusion so as you age every 10 years, how many words less can you type? Because it's going down at a constant rate with the line here, and it looks like it's about 3.5 words. So as you age every 10 years, you're losing 3.5 words off your um, words per minute rate, okay? So writing something to that effect would get you the marks there. Now, interestingly, if you, I mean, just a side note here, at what point can you no longer type in, into a phone. I mean, the, the regression line is almost predicting, just out of interest, um, it sort of looks like it might be that 70 there. So just before 80 years old, you will no longer be able to use a mobile phone, it seems, for typing a text message. An interesting prediction there. So you can see how sometimes the data doesn't quite, um, it might not be suitable. I'm sure an 80 year old could at least type one word into a phone. Anyway. Let's carry on with the question. Part C, the final bit, it just says, um, suggest two improvements which Jack could make to his process of collecting the data. So I would go back to part A and have a look at, at the experiment and just see if you can think of two ways that he could improve it. I mean, if we scroll back through very quickly, pause the video, look at the table, and then try and write down two things that you think he could do to improve and then I'll bring up the mark scheme and you can see if you've got those. Okay, so pause the video. Hopefully you've had a go at that. Um, and let's quickly just have a look. What would you get on the mark scheme? So it's generally, um, he only did 10 people, didn't he? So the first thing they suggest is, well, increase the sample size. So the more people you, you sample, the more reliable the data is going to be. So let's balance out the uh, male and female. So have the same number. Um, and then there are some other reasons there. So have a, have a read of that. Pause the video, have a read and see what the mark scheme is asking for. I hope that helps.